let me ask you a question. Do you hate getting ripped off by big pharma? Top line guess is that you, the answer to that is going to be yes, particularly if you're listening to this show. But the real question, the thing we want to know about from a political point of view is what other people hate getting ripped off by big pharma. Do Republicans hate getting ripped off by big pharma? Do swing state voters hate getting ripped off by big pharma? How much political impact does this whole question have? And our next guest is, uh, thanks to some recent research, uniquely positioned to answer that question. And our next guest is none other than our good friend, Alex Lawson. Alex is the executive director of Social Security Works, uh, which recently co-sponsored a poll that touches on uh, these areas. So without further ado, Alex, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me, Richard. Always great to have you. So first of all, did I oversimplify the context of your polling? Not at all. Um, the, uh, the only thing is that we actually had to poll this question, I think is the part that your, uh, your audience will be sort of amazed with, right? But in Washington, D.C., there is this narrative that's being fomented uh, by Big Pharma and their hundreds of millions of dollars in uh, lobbying efforts, their army of lobbyists, that somehow getting ripped off by pharma is a partisan issue, right? When, and what that means is uh, what you hear is like, OK, well, we don't want to take on pharma too much because that could be a tough vote uh, because you know, that's, I mean, you do know this, uh, it, it, it's what happens when the political establishment right. is actually listening to pharma and they're using it as an excuse to water down the proposals. Um, so we, uh, Social Security Works, Progressive Change, uh, uh, Progressive Ca Change Campaign Committee, the PCCC, uh, and the Business Initiative for Health Policy, which is the small business organization fighting for uh, Medicare for all and lower drug prices, we put a poll in to just see, does anyone get uh, like getting ripped off by pharma? And uh, any surprised results there? I mean, for like any rational person, obviously not. No one likes getting ripped off by pharma, right? Um, but we did do it in a very specific way. We right. chose three states at random. Uh, Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina. It has right. nothing no to do, reason. no reason. Right, right, right. Not because those are the three first states in the presidential primary process. But we also chose specific districts. We chose Steve King's district in Iowa uh, because that dude's terrible and we want to defeat him. Uh, and because he's a white nationalist uh, and is just generally terrible. And his district is deeply Republican. Uh, mm -hmm. So in, in political speak, it's an R plus 22, which means that district is... 22 points more Republican than the average congressional district. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's as deep ruby red Republican district as possible. In New Hampshire, uh, we did New Hampshire one, which is a swing district. Uh, and it's represented right now by a Democrat, but it is an R plus four. So it's actually represented by a Democrat, but it's kind of in the middle. It's four points more Republican than the average district. And then in South Carolina, we, we polled what's a frontline district, which is represented by a Democrat, but it's actually an R plus 16. So it's quite a Republican district represented by a Democrat. And those frontline districts are often what uh, more corporate types are saying that we need to water down policies to protect those frontline districts. Um, so I'm going to just tell you, literally no one likes getting ripped off by pharma. Doesn't matter if you drive a Prius or you like wearing a camo NRA hat, we had above 80% uh, in all three of these districts. And in fact, in South Carolina was the highest number uh, for people who wanted Medicare to negotiate uh, with prescription drug companies, with corporations. And also, we asked about a uh, policy that you and I have spent a lot of time talking about. If a company is abusing their monopoly, allowing generic competition right. to drive the price down. Because this is so, somehow like held up as a very radical policy. And you're like, it's super common sense. Uh, so what did we find there? Same thing. Everyone is like, yes, yes, we think that's a great idea. Republicans, independents, Democrats in all three districts 
around 80% uh, not only want Medicare to negotiate, but also want to allow generic competition if a drug company is abusing their monopoly. And what you have, I mean, this one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why these findings were of interest to me, I mean, I kind of set it up as if, you know, thanks, Captain Obvious, you know, people don't like this stuff. But the fact, that, the fact that there is such strong opposition to getting ripped off by big pharma, the fact that there's such strong support for measures to actually reduce the ripoff rate, to actually do something about it, I think is really important in this town, right? And that's right. what you were saying, because people need to see the numbers. And and, and if you're re bearing in mind that there are two pharma lobbyists for every member of Congress in this town right now, my theory is one takes a day shift, one takes a night shift, but I'm not sure that's true. Uh, but there are a lot of them prowling this town. If you're a member of Congress, if you're a senator and you hear day in, day out, only what they have to say, that this is a radical idea to let people compete with a generic if they're abusing their patent or, or that Medicare should be able to negotiate drug prices. If you hear that each and every day, you actually need to see, no, you know what, your constituents or people that are a lot like your constituents in other districts really, really want you to do something about this. That's about the only thing I can think of other than principle, which you don't see that much of, that might budge them to do something. I mean, is that fair? It is, and I would, this is like one of the only venues where I could push on it a little bit and say, it's not just that, because it is that, but it's also, I don't know, orthogonal or like, even if you don't believe it, when you're hit with a ton of propaganda, it still affects you. Right. Because it actually orients you in a certain, you cannot believe it, but you're somewhere in your brain, you're like, there must be something to that, right? So like, they're probably, you know, not telling the truth because they're corporate lobbyists, but like, it can't be a total lie. You know what I mean? I it, do, no, I know exactly what you mean. And, and, and I think that's a, a really important uh, refining of it. Because I think then you might come away saying, well, you no, know, I think probably, you know, most people agree with me, but there are a bunch of people out there that think it interferes with free enterprise to, you know, allow generic competition or whatever. And what this poll says is, no, there aren't. Everybody hates getting ripped off. Everybody supports common sense actions to do something about it. Exactly. And not only is it like the, I'm not going to get hit by my constituents if I do this, right? Like not only is this like a good win, what these numbers show, when you have 80%, 80%, remembering that 10% of people believe like the Loch Ness Monster abducted them in a UFO uh, right. or just hit the wrong number or gave the wrong response, meaning 10% is a really like, that's a very not, if something's 90%, that's basically 100%. Right. This is as close as you can get. This is not uh, an issue. This is like a feeling that people have, a strong emotional feeling on this issue. What it means is if you don't do something on this and if you don't do something big, you're going to get hit, right? That's the the directional thing that I think is important. Right, it's what, uh, and again, we're talking with Alex Lawson of Social Security Works about new polling uh, on drug issues. It's what uh, political science types and consultants call a valence issue, right? It's an issue that can move somebody's vote if you're on the right side of it, or if you're on the wrong side. But at least that's the way I read your numbers. Totally, that's how high they are. I mean, when you also look at polling and, um, you know, I know you know this and our, the audience is well into this, but just to point it out again, issues where you have, you know, 80% of Democrats and 20% of Republicans, that's a very different looking issue, right? Like what that means politically is very different from an issue where you have 80% of Republicans, 80% of independents and 80% of Democrats. It means there are not two sides to this issue. It's literally a wedge issue or a bridge issue, whichever way you're looking at it. It means you can't go too hard on pharma. You actually, the danger is in going not hard enough on pharma. So a compromise on an issue like this is the politically wrong way to go. 
This is one of those ones where the best policy is also the best political choice. Um, so, so that's what these numbers of, show. Yeah, in the words of the old rock and roll song, too much ain't enough when it comes to going after uh, big pharma, which is good because I always have the attitude to give go after them too much. What you're saying is it's not too much. So Just well, enough. Too much is just right. Um, so now let's talk for a second about the activist dimension of this, right? Because uh, Social Security Works, activist group, we're an activist program. We try to encourage people to be activists. So obviously we want this finding, which is, wow, people really hate Big Pharma, and wow, people really support doing something about it, uh, to translate into actual action, mm -hmm. right? We've had a couple proposals uh, in Congress. We have Lloyd Doggett's proposal uh, would have addressed part of this, and I interviewed him for The Nation. Uh, we had uh, Rokana. At the rollout of his, of his bill. Right. Which this polling is very much tied or tracks with his bill. Medicare negotiation allowing generic competition if a company abuses their monopoly. Uh, and like these are not these are extremely mainstream ideas. That's the point of it. So how do we get how and by we I mean a sort of activist community, everybody listening to our words, whoever, how do we actually get this to happen? So we have I think the strategy. Right. Lloyd Doggett's bill, the Doggett bill, Medicare negotiation with a competitive license backstop, is not the end on be all. I want to go way further than that on when it comes to prescription drugs. We need to rebuild the entire system to be based on justice, to be based on public health need and not private company greed. But this is a step along the way. Right now there's a really live debate happening about how high should the Democrats aim. Uh, and Lloyd Doggett's bill is actually the one that pulls highest. Mm -hmm. So it's the boldest one that is really being considered right now, which means the activist strategy should be to get every single member of Congress hearing in their district from their constituents that they need to be on the Doggett bill. And if their member of Congress is on the Doggett bill, they actually, because pharma is so profoundly powerful, they need to call their member and thank them for being on the Doggett Bill, tell them to speak up about the Doggett Bill, to be a champion for the Doggett Bill, uh, because that's, that's you know, the currency of Washington, D.C., is not just that you're on the bill, but if you have members actually proudly standing with it, that, you know, goes and, out. And by on the bill, just for the people who don't know, that means being a co-sponsor. A co-sponsor of the right. bill. Um, and so if you call up your member of Congress, um, and you can go to socialsecurityworks.org, and it's very findable on a tile about Lloyd Doggett's bill, um, Medicare negotiation bill. You know, something that we've worked on for a long time, Medicare negotiation, and this is the strongest form of it. Uh, you can find if your member of Congress is on it, you can call them if they are on it, you say thank you, and we need you to really raise your voice on it. Um, and if they're not on it, you need to call them and tell them uh, that they need to be on it and that the only people who don't want to take on pharma in a hard way are pharma themselves. So if, if, if a member of Congress is not willing to take on pharma, it means they're on the side of pharma, which is the opposite side from the people. And that's something they should, people should be saying when they call it, are you with us? Or are you against us? Exactly. And and ju just a note on this for the people who are listening, because I'm always hammering this, but I think it's important. People say, oh, you, how much does it really matter if I call my representative's office? It matters a lot, I think, doesn't it? It's like the only thing that matters. I mean, like uh, visits to their offices, uh, but they need to hear from you. Uh, if it didn't matter... Corporations wouldn't spend hundreds of millions of dollars ensuring that they are talking to members of Congress. Um, it's really the currency. They, we, they, we need to raise our voices. So getting in the streets, you know, people in the streets raising our voices together in mass mobilizations like we did uh, previously uh, just a couple of weeks ago outside of Pharma's headquarters uh, led by National Nurses United, you know, that's super impactful. Uh, but everybody every day can make a difference as well by calling their member of Congress. It's literally a scorecard that is kept in the office. And they're like, oh, we had six pharma lobbyists visit us and only two calls 
to take on high drug prices, pharma's winning still. Right. We need to actually match them the way they match us, two lobbyists for every one member of Congress. We need at least two contacts from, uh, from actual constituents for every lobbyist contact that pharma has. You know, they don't get more radical than me, I don't think. Uh, maybe you, but on big pharma, because oh, you. you know I'm the guy who thinks that we ought to basically use existing drug dealer laws to seize the homes of big pharma executives and turn them into rehabs for opioid addicts. So I'm like, you know, I really, I really hate the pharmaceutical industry. I think it's evil. Now, having said that, in the world we live in, one of the ways to get to the world we want. You alluded to this earlier. Maybe we can close with this is by doing things like the Doggett bill. Now, I don't think Representative Doggett is with me on my full agenda, but the fact is that uh, bills like his would save lives. Mm -hmm. They would level the playing field. And I fully, I'm not big on in, incrementalism as an ethos here in Washington, D.C., but I think they would get us closer to where we need to be. And you're, I'll give you the closing thoughts on that. Uh, the concept of allowing generic competition when a pharmaceutical corporation abuses their monopoly is an idea whose time has come and is new here. It is a huge step in the right direction. It's literally taking aim at the center of the pharmaceutical corruption, which they spend all their time saying, once we have a monopoly, once we have a patent that grants us the monopoly, we can do whatever we want with that forever. And that's just wrong. Uh, and so challenging that and saying, no, there are parameters around this privilege of a monopoly that you're granted. And when you abuse this privilege, you lose this privilege and we allow generic competition to bring the price down. Uh, it's done literally everywhere else in the world. It's a very normal idea. It conforms with our own trade laws. Uh, so we're the only country that is allowing pharma to rip us off at the absolute top level. We pay for the research. It's primarily funded by our right. tax dollars to develop these drugs. We give the patent to the corporations and they turn around and charge us the highest prices in the world. Uh, and this bill goes a, uh, is a solid step in the right direction of stopping the ripoff. And I don't want any conservatives telling me they're against it because after all, this bill is encouraging competition. Competition. So unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. But Alex Lawson, Executive Director of Social Security Works, as always, great talking to you. Thanks so much.